thought, whoa, we had a lot of people with heart disease, but also a very strong women. All of the women I can remember also were working women. And they were also very impactful women. They gave back to their communities. They gave back to the country. They were committed to community service and give back. And I, that's so important. And it was, there are little things that they did with me that I still do today. And there are little things that they did with me that I do with my grandchildren and my children. And it, it, it's women, but it's also the entire family line. And I, I'm very aware of the um, effort and impact and example that we set as women and especially women, but as family members. And that given that I have touched those generations before because I knew them and those that are coming behind me with my granddaughters, I realize, and my grandsons, I realize that they're gonna carry things into the future that will be part of us and our family that weren't necessarily, I may not even know them, but they'll, but they'll be part of us. And being impactful and giving back to the community and giving back to organizations like the American Heart Association are so important. It was also really interesting as I began to research the American Heart Association, although I've been a huge supporter, I had no idea what longevity this company or this organization had and where they started. And I began to remember my dad's mom because she had a heart disease and she passed away. There was really nothing but a little bit of medication that could have been done for her at that point in time. And I was 13. But today we have so many more um, advancements, health care that can be done. We're talking about heart health and how we can be more healthy. And I wondered today as I began to prepare for some of the rest of this, if in our grandchildren's lifetimes, if health for heart, if heart disease will be eradicated completely. And if they then will decide because heart disease is eradicated, if they'll choose to make an impact themselves in their own lives in an incredible way. And so if not, I hope that they will continue the support of the American Heart Association and heart health. Um, and if so, I know that they'll move on all of our children, our grandchildren and strength. Um, as I was working today, also, anytime I, uh, prepare before I have something to speak about, I always look up the definition of what that is. And I looked up impact and impactful today. And one of the definitions was a force to be reckoned with. And so that is probably a good description for the women in our family, a force to be reckoned with. And I know that that will continue in the generations to come. And I know that it will continue with all of you who are impactful in your business and in community give back and service. So I want to thank everybody for their participation. It's been wonderful to see this. I love that I've got three generations on this call of my own. And, um, and I know my grandmothers would be really proud of this. So thank you for your participation. I hope you have a good time. It's a great thing to do a cooking class anyway. So <laughs> thanks. Thanks, honey. I love you. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you so much. Speaking of forces to be reckoned with and, and personal stories, um, Angie, why, um, you know, I just put in the chat feature and it's right here that heart disease is the leading cause of death in women. I don't know if anybody on this call really knew about that. And that one in six women the age of 20 and older have coronary heart disease. So huge impact, but it affects men and women. My personal story is my, my soon to be father-in-law had heart disease and still struggles with it. Um, a big reason why we do the heart walk every single year and why I'm a big advocate for this. Angie, what is, why does this affect you? Well, I come, my family is a long line of heart disease in my family and um, including my mom and, and both my parents. When I was eight years old, my dad had his first massive heart attack. They gave him six months to live. I was eight years old. Um, so what he did is he changed his lifestyle. He changed his eating habits. He changed his exercise. And um, he ended up living another 20 years just by, wow. making, just by making changes in his life. Um, 
my grandson, when um, he was two years old, was diagnosed with, I always have it, ventricular tachycardia. Um, and so just heart disease runs in our family. So it's just important to, to be aware and to, you know, exercise, eat right, eat healthy, and, you know, support the American Heart Association so that they can keep their research going. For sure. Thank you so much for sharing that and being vulnerable enough to tell us about your story. That, that means a lot. So in our next slide, um, I wanted to turn this over um, to Gwen to give a little bit about what is it that the American Heart Association is doing that we may not be even aware of. Well, thank you so much, Tiffany, for having me. For Thank you so much for leading this campaign with our first inaugural class of Women of Impact. Um, I am the Go Red for Women director. This movement started about 17 years ago. And, you know, listening to what Kathy and Angie were sharing, uh, you know, Kathy, like what you were talking about is why this movement started. So many women were told by their doctors, oh, you're having an anxiety attack. Oh, it's panic attack. Our symptoms are so different than men. And even on the big Hollywood movie screen, you always see a man having a heart attack, but you never see a woman having a heart attack. And it's the number one killer of women. I think that is a huge understanding of, wow, we need to raise awareness. And every day we do things like this, we save a life because knowing that this is the number one killer, that women should be more aware of what's going on with their body. We tend to take care of our families. Just like tonight, we are cooking, making a healthy dinner. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for doing this. And you know, making a healthy dinner for our family. Once again, though, we're putting everyone first, but not ourselves and not our health. And who's taking care of our family? It is us. So we need to make sure that we're healthy for them and we're role models to them. So working out, making sure you put that opportunity, that time away to just do a stretch, get up from your desk, because a lot of us are sitting. I know I need to put time on my calendar even to go for a walk or even leave this room. So very important that we do that. And, you know, just probably maybe about 20 or 30 years ago, probably 30 years ago, women weren't even considered in research for heart disease and cardiovascular disease and stroke. That's how insane it is for me to understand that just recently we are part of more research studies. And with this movement, you know, we're asking women to sign up to be part of research. It's just a click on our Go Red for Women website where you can sign up to participate in either a questionnaire, just being engaged, but really bringing that awareness to that we as women can make a change be strong, stand up for our, our sisters, our friends, our moms, our daughters, and really make a change. And so thank you, Tiffany, for this. Tiffany is leading the inaugural Women of Impact class. Um, we did a little competition. They are raising funds for research and for the Go Red for Women movement. And they're also bringing impact. So they're doing things like this where they're they're really doing direct impact in the community by raising awareness, teaching CPR classes. Really, these women are fantastic and leaders, and that's why they were nominated, because we saw in them the opportunity to really push this to spread more awareness and really bring more women um, awareness of what, how important this is. So thank you so much, Tiffany. We really, she is, today's the last day of this campaign. Uh, we can't wait to to, to announce uh, Tiffany is our winner. So it really <laughs> helps everyone to support her. Um, we have till midnight, midnight yeah. tonight to make those uh, donations. I heard there's a gift for the biggest donation today. There so is, Glenn. <laughs> oh my God, Glenn, thanks for teeing us up. So <laughs> I put in the chat feature um, the link to uh to how to make a donation and if you're uh cell phone savvy the the slide before that if you want to go back to the last slide too just really quickly uh jen uh has a qr code for those of you who don't know how to use a qr code go to your your photo settings and you just hold your phone right up there and it pops right up into it so um 
So for whoever makes the largest donation during our event today before midnight, you will win. Next slide. Yay, a family heart healthy American Heart Association healthy families cookbook and all of your apron and cooking essentials. So that will come directly to you. I will get your home address. Most of you I might know pretty well and uh, and send it over to you. So again, uh, we're so appreciative because um, Jen Pro Scare Heart is donating her time today. And with that and Miller Pro Support, um, we would encourage everybody to, to use what they would have normally spent on having a really awesome, famous chef in Jen uh, cooking for us and teaching us how to be great cooks um, versus putting something in the microwave, and then donating that back to the American Heart Association. So I also put it in the chat feature, do consider uh, donating. And with that, here's what you got as far as your ingredients. You all should have had it uh in the link if you didn't weren't able to get your ingredients that's okay it'll be a fun watching experience as well i've got my tiffany miller prost apron on ready to go and for those of you that aren't thank you courtney kirian um my wonderful sister for donating and so those of you that aren't familiar with how you use zoom when we take off this screen i'm going to pin jen however up in your right hand corner of your screen, you're going to see this little thing called view. If you click on the speaker view versus the gallery view, you're going to see only Jen. So while I'm going to pin her, if for some reason the pinning isn't working to tech standards, then all you have to do is instead of the gallery view, which is seeing all of our beautiful faces, I'm sure you definitely want to see me cooking. You probably more so want to see Jen. So make sure to click on the speaker view. So with that, if we can close out the slides and feature Jen, I'm going to pin her now. There she is. And I'm going to now click on my view that says speaker view. And now I see just Jen in big and I see the rest of us up at the top. Hopefully everybody did the same. Jen, do you see that? Uh, no, I mean, I see the main people, but it's fine. Jen, if you go up to the upper right where it says view, like a little view up there, view, and then you click on speaker view, you'll there. be able to see your sister. Are you in? Yep. yep. We see. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Jen, okay. we're all ready for some fun. Take it away. All right. So if you haven't gotten your rice and your water yet that's boiling, um, add your rice. Once it's boiled, um, with a, just a tinch bit of the low sodium salt, put a lid on it, bring it down to a simmer. We're going to have that. I have a timer on for 20 minutes. Let, let that cook. Kind of forget about it for right now. I've already pre-washed all my veggies. We're going to get that going. Preheat your oven. If you have an at-home oven that's not a convection oven, heat it to 375. If you have a convection oven, heat it to 350 because the confection oven has a fan that blows the heat to circulate so it cooks faster. So you want it at a little bit of a lower temperature than what I'm doing here. Um, we're gonna grab our zucchini and squash. I always like to start with two with a trash bowl. It's hey Jen, just yes. a quick question for those of us moms that um, are, are not lazy, but use technology to help us out during a day when we head off to work. What do we do with a rice cooker? <laughs> Is it just as long? <laughs> um, no, it's kind of just a set preset and they have timings on it depending on your rice cooker and you just set it and it's easy. Um, another option is, which does sometimes have a little bit more sodium in it. You can buy that Minute Maid rice or what I like to do too. Um, I like to buy my rice you know, in a big container, it's, you know, yep. cost effective to you get a control of sodium levels in it is you could cook that ahead of time the day before. There's a lot of prep stuff you could do a day before. Um, another tip for you guys before we get started too with cutting and chopping is I like to lay a wet cloth or um, you could use a paper towel underneath your cutting board because now your cutting board won't move on your surface. It makes it stick really nice so you don't have to worry about 
any accidental. Um, Holy cow, that's an aha moment right there that I've never done. <laughs> so we will just get started with, we're just, we're not doing anything fancy here. We're just gonna cut off these ends that you don't wanna eat, throw them in the garbage or compost or, that's why I like to have a bowl because you don't have to turn around to get to that trash can or your compost can and just toss those in there. I'm going to take my zucchini because it's pretty, you know, symmetrical all the way through and just cut that down the middle. And we're going to do nice big, we're going to do nice big chucks. Sorry, that's my three year old here. Sorry. It's a mother daughter event. It's okay, babe. Uh, so we're just going to chunk these about a little less than an inch, like three fourths of an inch. Then what kind of knife are you using? Well, I'm using a Wushoff knife that is like specially made, but you can use what normal people use. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the knife I brought my mom that she won't use is like, using is a Sunuko knife as well. Um, you can use that's Kaplan brand. I use a sharp, uh, knife sharpener. You always want to have a very nice sharp knife to prevent any accidents. You never, a dull knife, you're going to cut yourself because you're putting more pressure into it. The other thing with chopping, especially when you're doing mincing, you hold your fingers like this. So you more have the knife glide against your knuckles if you can do that. And we're just doing a nice fast chop through. And we're just going to add it, like I said earlier, I'm cooking for five people today. So I had a pre-chop so that we weren't going to spend my whole prep time. Um, just sprinkle these on the pan. And then with a yellow squash, it usually is a narrow neck. We'll just cut that, throw that on the pan because it's going to be about the same size as all the other pieces. You want to try to keep your chunks of um, vegetables somewhat consistent squash and zucchini a little bigger because they do hold a lot of water and they're very delicate vegetable versus when we get to um the garlic and the shallots and then the peppers that we're going to hey, be jen do you also do any oil or something on the pan or are you are you pamming it as in like um i'm not i'm doing a pam avocado spray that we will do afterwards and not on the bottom of the pan I'm not doing it on the bottom because I'm going to spray on the top and toss it. So it's going to coat everything and it will get on the bottom. So I don't pre-oil it. Yet. I do that kind of at top and toss it on my pan so that it, all those flavors will get through. So awesome. we're kind of prepping right now. Um, so take your yellow squash, cut that down the middle like the zucchini. And we're going to do the same kind of just big chunk dice there again. And we will add that. Everything is just very simple cuts, nothing fancy. We're not doing any mincing tonight. Now with your shallot, you wanna cut the tip end off like an onion. We are going to cut this down in half at the root. Peel back, just like an onion. You discard the outside layer. And again, we're just doing some nice big kind of chunks. All the way down to that root and discard that root piece. And I like to kind of break up my shallot so it's not so whole like this. I like to kind of, so you could sprinkle it around. So it's kind of like you get those chunks of roasted Charlotte tends to be a lot easier on the stomach too as well. It has a little bit of a sweeter taste too than um, a lot of the onions. So I like to use shallots a lot more than onions too. Um, I tend to have a little bit more of a sensitive stomach. So just kind of check them. They don't need to be all individually. You just kind of want to break it apart a little bit. Nothing fancy, very simple. We're not getting crazy here. Once you're done with the shallots and the zucchini and yellow squash, we'll move on to the garlic. And that is a very simple 
um, smashing of it. Break up, you take your clove here. We're gonna take our knife and our palm and you wanna make sure obviously the blade is facing away you, from you. You don't want your blade facing towards you. We're gonna take the heel of our palm and just kind of do a smash. So it's kind of, you smash it out like this, you get the peel off here. So it's just gonna be kind of broken up like this. We're gonna take that root end off. We're just gonna slice that off and then throw it in the pan because everything's gonna roast at the same temperature. So you're gonna get chunks of roasted garlic and all these great flavors of the vegetables. So you won't have to use too many of dry um, seasoning. And I sometimes just take, depending on, my clove was really big. So when I smashed it, I'm kind of breaking it apart. Smaller cloves, keep them whole. I just happen to have like literally ginormous cloves, if you could see. <laughs> so for those of us that don't have fresh garlic, how much would you recommend we put in? Like if we have minced garlic or something like that? Uh, minced. So I would do like a tablespoon of minced and I would maybe first get all your ingredients out on your pan, spray it, and then put that kind of more on top because you don't want that minced garlic setting on the pan because then it will start turning brown and you'll get a very bitter taste because okay. we're roasting it for so long. Um, if you're doing powder, any dry seasonings will oil it, put the seasonings and mix it together. I would probably do a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half, depending on how much garlic you like. Even with, if you want to use onion powder or dried onion, I would go a little less on that. You tend to use more fresh than you do dry because the dry has more flavor and it's a lot more powerful. Okay. And how many shallots did you use? I didn't, I didn't catch that. I, I did one shallot. I mean, tonight I am using two jumbo ones because again, I'm cooking for five people. Got it. Um, but it does kind of depend if you guys aren't big on the onions, then use less. It's kind of on your preference. That's the beauty of this recipe too, is you use what you like. The vegetables you like, I'm using sweet peppers tonight because I can't do bell peppers. Um, they're really hard on my digestive system. So I like to use sweet peppers. And that's why I gave options. You use what your family likes. Um, typically I would even add mushrooms to it. Some people aren't mushroom eaters. So I left that out tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. So again, I had a jumbo, huge chunk of garlic. I'm kind of breaking that up so it roasts nicely and with what I'm making. And just keep peeling. Wait, I missed it. What are you doing? Are you still cutting more? The garlic. Oh, got it. I'm going on to the peppers here next. So you're already past all the other stuff. Grab your peppers. Whether it's bell, um, I can explain a fun trick when you're cutting up your bell peppers. With the sweet peppers, my these are the sweet peppers. They're kind of little. They look almost like they'd be like a little jalapeno style. I just straight cut off the tops. You'll still have the seeds in it. We'll cut that down the center because these are easier to get the seeds out. Now, if you're cooking with an actual bell pepper, and I'll kind of show you with one of my sweet peppers here. I wanna make sure you get all those seeds out. No one likes to eat a seed. What you'll do with your bell pepper, if that's what you're doing, you're gonna wanna cut down by the stem and kind of go around in a square shape. And that's gonna help collect most of your seeds. It's a little hard with these little peppers to kind of show, but so you should be left with a bigger version of this. So you will have most of your seeds. It's an easy way to get a lot of those seeds out. So you're left with more of an empty. Wait, can you do that one more time? Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to see if I have another bigger pepper. Cause I have the big pepper. Okay, let me see what. I might like this big though. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my mom might have one. I go just, big or go home, people. 
I can't do bell peppers. It's hard on my digestive system. So that's why we're doing, that's why I put sweet peppers. Um, so what you want to do when you have your big bell pepper, yeah, you're gonna cut basically straight down along the stem and you'll basically on a big bell pepper, the seeds stay in the center a lot better than the sweet peppers. And you will be left with basically a seedless slices. Oh, Tiffany, I never knew that. I need to know that either. I've been cutting it off fully long this whole time. I know, me too. It does help. <laughs> she never teaches me this stuff. <laughs> I do teach her. She just does all this. No, time. she just takes over the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. And she goes, You're going to cut yourself. Just let me do it. I kick her. And out. I'm like, oh, yeah. And I sit and drink wine and she just goes, Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. I, I do. She sits at the so she sits me <laughs> she sits at the end of the counter and keeps me company. I go, that's what I love it. I love it. So thank you again for everyone who's making the donations. I'm seeing them all on the chat feature. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know that uh, everyone's excited about and having fun drinking wine. I see lots of wine drinking, lots of uh Kid, lots of moms that are saying that they relate to you, uh, to Jen with kids uh, screaming in the background and, uh, <laughs> and lots of good learning too, even if they're not participating, they're learning and the experience of what to do, especially the knife trick. Okay, that is my right timer. You know what I like was the kids in the background dancing. Absolutely. Take this off the heat. We had it, Jocelyn had to go. Bye bye. Yeah, she was. She started got. She got a little wild. So are we just cutting these in slices, Jen? We're not cutting them any smaller. Show you here in just a second. Um, if your timer went off for your rice, get that off the heat. We're gonna let it sit for five minutes here, with the lid on, and then we'll take the lid off and fluff it. You just you can use a fork, or if you have like. I'll probably use a wooden spoon because I'm using a non-stick. I don't want to ruin that. If you have non-stick pans, you never want to use metal on them. Wait, no. what? Them up. If you have non-stick pans, you never want to use metal on them. You never want to use metal. So you don't want to use any metal cooking utensils. You want to either have silicone or wood, something that's going to be nice to your pans. Look at this, guys. All of these aha moments. They're worth a big donation. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. You, <laughs> don't you, you think one? You never knew that? No, I mean, look it. I, I work for an accounting firm. I, I, don't, I don't work for a chef. <laughs> so what we're- The knife trick. <laughs> yeah, the knife trick. Exactly, exactly. Even with your bell pepper, you're going to want to, depending on how big your bell peppers open, we're just going to want to make them into chunks. Again, like big chunks about an inch or less, depending on your cut. And you were just throwing them with the rest of the vegetables. Oh, well, shoot. It's nothing fancy, whatever you, this is why it's simple. You don't have to have any skill set. Tiffany, I want to see what you're doing. <laughs> it's one of those uh, Pinterest moments where she's making the cake and then my cake kind of looks like a lopsided, like, you know, that, that, that's kind of what this is going to We'll see. Like. I even have a thin slice from when I started. Okay. Right. I'm just going to add it to my pan. Again, it's nothing that has to That's be what we should do is everybody should take a picture that's on the call today of what their meal looks like. Yeah. So we can all compare what, what looks closest to Jen and post it on Facebook. <laughs> I bet you people like my friend Shafali that are on the call drinking uh, quote unquote heart healthy wine as she says her her pieces cut up may be a little odd she may even have a half a finger in her pieces by the time she's done drinking all the heart healthy wine I'm using avocado spray. You can use extra virgin olive oil. I like the flavor of avocado spray. It also has the healthy fats and great for your brain. It has a lot of great benefits and it also gives a nice flavor. So I, again, am just spraying the top of my vegetables. I'm giving it a good spray on these because I have a lot more um, 
And so, then, hey, Jen, I have a question about avocado oil that I'd like for, your, for maybe others uh -huh. to about too. I heard that avocado oil, when you're using it on a skillet though, just for like not baking, but using it on a skillet is, is ends up turning into bad fat versus like using like a coconut oil or something. Do you know anything about that that you can comment on? Um, I don't know per se. I mean, you have to be careful with using it. You don't want to cook it at too high of a temperature it is. for baking yeah. it. Okay. Um, I don't typically do it, use avocado oil when I'm doing it on a skillet setting. Uh, I do it more in a bake setting. What do you use for a skillet setting? I use olive oil. I don't really cook too much with butter occasionally. Like I might use it in my eggs as a splurge thing, but yeah. I like to use um, extra virgin olive oil. I have a great olive, uh, olive oil places, which most cities have a uh, great infused olive oil specialty and they're all usually organic. And I always like to support local as much as I can. Um, I'm gonna start salting this with my little sodium. I would use about a half a teaspoon of salt. So that low sodium salt does kind of go a long way. I'm definitely using a little bit more. And then depending on how much pepper, if you guys are big pepper eaters or not, I would use about a fourth of a teaspoon or you could go heavier. I'm I am gonna eyeball just doing fresh cracked pepper in my on my pan. Did you already add the salt and did I miss that? What? Did you add the salt already, Jen? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. It was in my container. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need like, I need like captions. Well, I'm big on using pinch or you use a measurement. I'm not big on shaking because you can't control your salt level. So if you have it in a container or something, they make a great or with little spoons, it helps control the amount of salt you put in versus just dumping it in and you don't know. Because you could end up dumping a lot more salt. Um, great example is my daughter did that on Easter. And then I took her plate because I was like, well, I gave her a little too much food. And I forgot she dumped about a teaspoon of salt on top of her food. <laughs> Love it. Someone handed her the salt shake. Yeah, ladies who also experienced that. Eating it. <laughs> Who needs a teaspoon of salt on him? <laughs> yeah. Is there a heart healthy substitute if you really like salt? Oh, there you go, Ange. Good question. Uh, the low sodium salt is a good heart healthy. Um, sea salt is even another great alternative. It's not as low sodium as the low sodium salt, but that is another better Iodized salt is one of the worst you can actually have. Um, if you want to use salt, if anything, I'd go kosher, or I really recommend sea salt, or I like um, Himalayan salt. It is a little bit more expensive, or again, the low sodium salt is going to be the best on the market of uh, a salt alternative. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm just taking my clean hands and kind of, again, moving my vegetables around to make sure that they're nicely coated with all the flavors. We're not doing any other kind of seasoning really with this because we do have the shallots. We have that whole garlic, like other seasonings that you typically would add to vegetables. We're roasting it all together. So all those flavors are really going to marry really nicely and very well. Just give my hands a little rinse. And then we're going to get this in the oven here. So if your oven's preheated, set this in. I'm going to, I'm putting 15 minutes on my timer right now to check it. Nancy, you make an excellent sous chef. <laughs> I'm taking Jasmine's all her pretend food that she was cutting and cooking before this. Okay. She wanted to help. And now so we're going to take our fork or I'm going to use my wooden spoon that's a fork style and fluff my rice. 
because it sat there long enough. You want to get that air in there to make it set nice. We're gonna let that sit for a minute. We're gonna now work on our salmon, get that tan that you're using. Um, a non-stick pan would be preferred. And we're gonna get that up on a medium high heat. Make sure you have your salmon out. No, I, and I thought that was a bottle of wine you grabbed. Yeah, bottle wine, and I have to go find something that's non-metal <laughs> for my non-stick pan. <laughs> Why your pan is heating up, because it will take a, yeah, good job. We're gonna chop some of our parsley. So grab your parsley by its stems. This is a very fast, easy technique. You could just rip some of that top of that parsley off. So to chop it up, hold the stems like this down and kind of take your knife and graze it across and you get all the tops of that parsley off kind of at a 45 degree angle and you're less left with pretty much the stems. And we're gonna- Jen, admittedly that is the the coolest and most simple thing that I never thought about in all this time. So, so we're just going to um, mince this up because this is going to be the topping when our veggie vegetables come out. We're going to sprinkle this on top because we don't really want that to get too roasted and we're going to set it aside in the dish. So we're just going to do a fast chop and how I chop is hold your point and down on your cutting board is a great technique and you just kind of rock it back and forth and move it. And then take the, take your knife at 45 degree angle, bring it back together and just keep going through it as fast as you can. Going back and forth again, just keep bringing it in. This helps stabilize your knife so you're not like going like this all over the place. It's another safety technique of holding that tip of that knife in like this and just going back and forth up and down with a little bit of that rocking. So this tip part should just be going like this here. Front rocking motion. And then a nice way to uh, pick up all that mint, anything that you ever mince is scoop with your knife with the blade side and kind of cuff it very gently so that you don't, with a sharp knife, you don't want to cut yourself and get it in the bowl. And we're going to set that aside for when we want to chop it, uh, top it later. Okay, to feel the heat of your pan, put your hand a little bit above. It feels, my pan feels hot enough. Actually, I might turn it down just a little bit. We're gonna add our extra virgin olive oil. And you wanna add about a teaspoon. You wanna coat this pan. So depending on how big of a pan you're used, uh, cooking with, you want about a teaspoon to a tablespoon. Sometimes I measure, depending on how big of a thing you have with my cap. Um, my pan's a little bigger, so I'm definitely gonna be using about two tablespoons. And just take that, make sure you're coated all the way around. You do want a somewhat of a de decent portion because we are searing this salmon and we wanna make sure we have enough in there so it doesn't stick either. Tiffany, I see Mike Prost has his hand up for a question. He does. He's watching this. I it don't is. know. Questions? What's Mike's question? Oh, he took his hand down. Maybe it was an accident. <laughs> you know what? I think he's testing you guys to see if you're looking for questions. 
Now Jean has a question. <laughs> okay, so I am taking my fresh dill. If you don't have fresh dill, that's fine too. I use dry dill a lot. And I'm just picking it off. We're just gonna do a slight uh, mince on that because we do need to season our salmon here Why that oil is heating up. And I'll show you a fun trick to know when that oil is hot enough. We don't want it to get too hot because it will turn. So again, just a nice mince over the dill. How we did with the parsley. Not too much, doesn't have to be as long because dill is a lot more delicate than the parsley and it's not as big. We'll set that aside. Okay, my salmon. So I have my nice steaks here. So we are going to season this with a pinch of salt. So less than a fourth of a teaspoon, just a little bit on the top. Do a little cracked pepper. A little dill. Sprinkle that up. And here's the trick to know when your water or your oil's ready. You can always put your hand above the pan, but if you don't feel like it's hot enough, sprinkle some water. And when you hear that sound, a little popping or dancing around, it is hot enough and you can add your fish. So let me get my hood on. So we are going to add the fish. We're going to put the season side down because we'll season it in the pan. You want to hear that nice sear. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but you'll hear a nice sear. And we're going to um, cook the fish for five minutes on each side, and then we'll flip it. Hey, Jen, we had a question, skin up or skin down? It doesn't look like you have any skins on yours. Uh, I don't have skin, so do skin side up. If you have skins on, do skin sides up to start with, and then we'll um, finish it with skin side down because we'll flip it. Awesome, thanks. And skin is like, they just didn't have, when I um, got my salmon, um, skin is actually has really great omegas and is really healthy for you. So I always recommend if you do have a salmon or fish and skin to actually eat it. It's one of the healthiest part. It has the most nutri nutrients in it as gross. Yeah, it's a texture thing, I get it, but it does have great nutrients in it. Okay, why that is uh, cooking, we're gonna just add a little bit of the seasoning like we did on the other side in the pan. A little bit of the dill. So Jen though, I presume if we have skin on it, are we adding, we're not adding dill and stuff to it. No, right? you don't need to add it on the skin side. Just oh. do it on the one side. Okay. If you have skin on it, you don't need to season the other side. Since I don't have skin, I'm wanting to season both sides to make sure the flavor is through. Now I do still have some dill left over that I'm going to use as a garnish later. So if you don't have fresh dill, that's fine. I'm just doing it as a garnish. It's not necessarily uh, necessary. 
Another technique is cleaning off your knife. Use a cloth, have a damp cloth too. And you just hold your knife away from you, sharp side down, and just pull your knife through. And then you'll have a fresh, clean knife to get started with anything else that you're chopping moving forward. Why that is cooking, everything else is cooking. I am gonna prep my lemon. I'm gonna save my butt ends though to get some juice off to squeeze on top of my lemon, um, on top of my salmon after it's done cooking. But I want some nice slices to also garnish when I plate up. So if people wanna add a little bit more acid in with their salmon, they can. So you just want about a centimeter thick. And then what I do like to do, because I just, I hate when seeds in my, or in my food, is I try to take those seeds out if you can, if not, leave them. But I don't like having them, so I'm gonna take mine out real fast to try to keep my wheels whole. Does anyone have any questions right now that I could? I can't see them coming in, but if anyone has- No any... other questions thus far. How long were we leaving the salmon on each side, Jen? Five minutes. Thank you. You're welcome. You'll start seeing it turning a little cake color. Uh, and then a good tool to test when your salmon's done too you'll start seeing it pull away and it'll have a flaky texture, just like with any fish. It will, and I'll show you guys when we get there, but it'll start separating. You just can take a fork and it'll just kind of pull apart and that's how you can know when your fish is done too. It looks like we got two minutes on our veggies to check too. Yes, and I'm gonna put my lid back onto my rice so that it stays warm so when we plate it, We'll be ready. Do you flop a rice cooker, you think? <laughs> Pardon me? Do you flop rice in a rice cooker, you think? Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't really have to. I mean, everything should be done. You really like pull it out and it's done. I don't use a rice cooker, but I haven't really, I'm at my parents' house using their kitchen. I have a very small kitchen at my house. So I don't have room for all those fun, fancy gadgets <laughs> that make life easy. So your salmon should be ready to flip. Like I said, I'm gonna use a silicone spatula. If you have a fish spatula, that's great too. They kind of almost look like a, a spatula with holes, um, like a whisk shape. But that's fine. That's I'm using just a spatula, so you're fine. So I am going to flip this. Meredith, it looks like you're cheating and making your husband cook for you. <laughs> He's flipping the salmon. And I just told her it was her thing. He goes, I'm not gonna touch it. And I go, why? So you can blame me if you don't like it? I go, no, it's your thing. Come in. Here. Come in. So you should have some nice golden brown on top from having it at that higher heat temperature. Should have a nice sear, we get it flipped. My timer is going off for my veggies, so we should probably be checking those just to see what they're looking like. Should I be doing something with them, moving them around or just checking on them? Um, I'm checking mine. I have so many, I don't need to move mine as far around. If yours look like they're getting a little golden, move them around. And then I put 10 more minutes on mine. 
Because I need some more tricks. You want a nice light golden, you'll be able to tell on your veggies too of um, your zucchini and yellow squash. We'll start getting some like, almost like a bubble on it. Of a no, little no bubble. No bubble, so just keep going. Okay, thanks Jen. So we'll add our acid here shortly. You don't want to add your acid too soon because what happens when you add acid to fish, it starts cooking it. That's why like ceviche is actually raw fish and you add acid to it and that's how it cooks it. So you can eat ceviche, so you can eat shrimp or any of that stuff. Like, so you don't want to add it too soon, else it does start make it turn that white color on a salmon if you add it when it's raw, because the acid does start cooking the fish. So in a couple minutes, I am going to add. I prepped my ends. And I, you don't need a lot of lemon, and then we're just going to add that on top of our um, salmon here. I did make sure I got all the seeds out if you have any seeds at, on your ends. No one wants to bite into a seed. Does anyone else have any questions so far or? Nope. Are you saying we're squeezing this on? No? No. Are we squeezing the lemon? Uh, we will here in just a minute. Oh, got it. Yeah, no questions yet. If anyone else has a question, fill them in the chat feature so that I can read them off. So we are going to get ready to squeeze the lemon. We'll turn this down just a little bit. Just squeeze that just you know, pretty generously over the salmon. There was a question as to who is going to clean up my dad's stove since there's splattered <laughs> oil everywhere. <laughs> so Don's yeah. cooking in the kitchen and I am smelling it. It smells delicious and I'm sitting here learning everything. But I walked in there a minute ago and there is oil everywhere. So I'll be cleaning it up. <laughs> so there you go, dad. Yeah. So with, it could be that you're, it's set either a little too high or too much oil. And I mean, I do have splatter here on, this is on their hood. So, you know, when you do cook, unfortunately, you do make a mess. So there is a little bit of a, a cleanup, especially when you sear anything as much as, I know that's why a lot of people don't like cooking is the cleanup afterwards. Right. Um, if you're the one cooking, then. <laughs> and that, that, we, had a, we had a request uh, from, from my, 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 my bonus sister, Beth, that her daughter would like to have you have a cooking show that we're doing this every single week. So <laughs> Carrie, uh, Carrie we'll, we'll, we'll put in a good request. Okay. <laughs> Your salmon should be pretty much there. So here's a good rule of thumb, depending, because it does depend on how thick and the portion size of your salmon. You can tell if your salmon's done. I don't know if you guys can see because I can't really tilt it. We can see. Tell that like right here, this piece is kind of breaking away from itself. Just with a little bit of me touching it. That's how you can tell that your salmon is done. So your piece is a little bigger. If you just pull, especially by the fatty part, Tiffany, yeah. if it starts pulling a little bit away, it's, then you know it's done. 
Now you can have some, and um, it still can have a little pink. Some people get scared thinking it's a little too raw. If you're one of those people, then cook it a little longer. If not, you could still actually eat it. It's not gonna hurt. My, my fatty part is pulling away. Some of us call that muffin tops, but. <laughs> So I am going to check my veggies to see how they're doing, and then we can start plating here. Uh, mine do look like they need a little bit longer. They are almost there. Yours might need a few minutes longer, but you can grab your plates. And I recommend that you can do some fun ways of plating. So if you wanna get fancy with your plating, I am going to actually grab a little ramekin to do my um, rice in, or if you just want to scoop it, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do uh, if you want to get pants with your plating. And I'm actually going to fill the ramekin, and if you go to restaurants and you see that like dome look, that's what they've done. They filled some kind of container, flipped it over, and had it on the plate, kind of pack it in, and then we're going to plate from there. Um, some other fast tips of when it's a weeknight and say you've had a busy day, you could prep all your veggies the night before, get it all seasoned, have them ready to go, and just keep them in the um, fridge till the next day. You know, salmon cook night up, but do the rice the night before. So all that will be ready for you when you come home and you can have a very heart healthy, fresh meal and something fast and easy for your family. So like I said, I am just going to fill this up and turn it over and dump it. So I get that beautiful little, I don't know if you guys can see, but that beautiful little round presentation. Such a good idea. So easy. So easy. Something simple and it makes you look like you know what you're doing even more so. So I'm gonna take my salmon fish and I'm just gonna lay that right here along my uh, rice here. Why my veggies are finishing cooking, I'm gonna keep plating my other plates here and then we'll get the veggies on the plate. And with that, I am going to take my lemon wheels as well, set that on my salmon just to give it some extra color. Take a little bit of dill sprig. Pop that right on top of my lemon wheel. Because you always eat with your eyes. You want to make sure that there's a bunch of color. You don't want all the same color because then it looks bland and tasteless. So remember, you always eat with your eyes first, then smell, and then taste. So I am going to get a spoon for my vegetables. I know we're pretty much out of time here. So I'm going to put my vegetables onto the side. Have a just nice variety. Take a little bit of my parsley, just for a little extra color on top. You can even sprinkle that a little bit on your rice just to show a little green on that bland white. 
And there you go. You have a nice little healthy dinner for the whole night for the family. Love it. That's incredible. How fun. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And we can't wait to dive into it. Awesome job, Jen. Thank you. Well, thank you for having us. And, you know, I try to do fast, easy meals, especially being a mom and, you know, trying to raise a, such a strong woman to be empowered and, you know, teach her about, you know, healthy living, healthy lifestyle, because we as women, you know, we need to make sure that we are here for one another. And, you know, we are very strong and empowering. We need to support one another and, and teaching the next generation. Yeah. Yes. I've heard not to really cook, but to be healthy. And then we got the next one. Oh. I just uh, put Le Chef, the link to Le Chef in uh, the chat feature as well. So if you are a local Louisan and uh, are looking for your business to have a party or you're looking for a great way to uh, to have a girls night or a ladies night, please contact Jennifer and Jen. Thank you so much for, for this was awesome. I, uh, this salmon is probably the best that I'm ever going to be able to prepare. So really appreciate it. And everything you did to uh to your time today so thank you very well much. thank you for having me i really appreciate it and thank it was a pleasure again thank you gwen um and american heart association for everything that you do uh kath thanks for being on and and supporting everything that has to do with me personally and uh and well, women. this was so much fun <laughs> This was really a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having us. So much Great. fun. Again, please check out the chat feature of Le Chef. And, um, and please don't forget to donate to the American Heart Association on the link. If those of you that are my are, uh, Facebook connections with me, you can also see that on my Facebook page. All of my friends, family, or friends of Angie and mm -hmm. family and friends of Miller Pros, thank you so much for joining us today on the American Heart Association and Miller Pro's Heart Healthy event. May you be well and uh, enjoy your dinners. If some of you are still able to taste them after the amount of wine you've been drinking. <laughs> you take and, a picture if you did it. Yes, and make sure to take a picture if you are. Um, yes, and, and send it over to me. I would love to be able to do a, a collage of all of our great pictures of everything that we've created. So. Thank you again, ladies. And, uh, Thank you. Cheers. cheers. Thank everybody. you, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.